What do you say to matriculants who are really struggling with pressure from their parents or their families to follow a career path that they either aren't equipped to follow or simply don't want to follow? I always wish I could have a discussion with all of those parents in, in my 20 odd years in higher education. I've had numerous discussions with parents who say, don't push your child into a career or a qualification where they don't want to be. Um, I don't want to upset the parents, but I think the young people must resist that because at the end of the day, you're not going to make a success of it. The in most instances, the parents are going to bear the brunt of the the financial implication of failure. Um, a, re uh, a while ago, I published an article on how f failing a year or repeating a year impacts financially on your ability to, to survive in 10 years' time. So my advice to parents would be, please don't do it. Of course, give support, give guidance, emotional support, help look for alternatives, but don't push your child into a career that they don't want to be in. It's not the right thing to do. Now to those matriculants who have achieved um, sufficient scores or marks to get them into the programs that they want to study in, of course we know that this isn't going to be without challenges. What is your advice to a student who is about to embark on the career that they've set their mind on for their whole high school career? Well, I, I don't believe in fate. So I don't think those young people who did well in matric got there by doing nothing. Maybe there's one or two exceptions, but generally speaking, they had to work hard. So they would already in, have instilled in them the culture of hard work, and that is necessary to continue. Of course, a risk is adapting to our education uh, institutions. You know, if you come from a, a school system where you have 30, maybe 40 children in a class, and suddenly you sit in an auditorium with 800 students, um, it's a different environment. So families here, yeah, again, families and friends must come in and support. And the young people must realize it's not going to be just all play. Uh, of course, it's not especially move out of house for the first time, move to a different city to have a big party, uh, do have those, but restrict them to weekends and put your head to the books. It's not going to be easy, even if you have seven distinctions in the trick. Peter, would you speak to us about the importance of having our learners go on to um, study further in, for South Africa? Well, that, in my opinion, goes without say. I mean, uh, if any young person today uh, just merely considers unemployment in our country, that's a problem. And open the newspaper and have a look at the number of jobs that are advertised where you don't need a form of higher education. And I think it will be quite clear that you must do whatever you can to get a qualification. Yes, the reality is that maybe some don't get it next year. Maybe some can't afford it. I mean, those are all realities. But there are other options as well, short learning programs. If you really cannot afford to get into a university next year, go look for a job, even if you take a low paying job. And through that, make it open in your interview that you want to study further, you're looking for a company that supports you. But definitely in the next five years, if you're school leaver now, you must do everything that you can to get further qualifications. Whether you're going to get a three-year degree, maybe not, but some kind of further education is absolutely essential. Peter Creel, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me.